Hey everyone, uh, today I'll be going over Elite Code uh, Problem 2050 Parallel Courses 3, hard. Uh, this is actually in the recent most contest, so I'm doing it exactly the way I did it, but in Python, uh, this time in Java. And it might not be the best way, but it makes sense to me, and we'll talk about time and space complexity, why it's not actually that bad. So they have all this junk here, but I'm gonna explain it as simply as possible. We have some uh, course prerequisites, and it's uh, structured as a direct directed a cyclic graph, so a DAG. So there's no cycles at all. And we have prerequisites to take courses. And each node has a time taken to take each course. We have to find the uh, minimum number of months needed to complete all courses. So it's kind of counter, it's kind of counterintuitive because it says minimum, but really it's the max path. Uh, the reason being is if there's some really long path, we have to take all the courses, right? Uh, here's a perfect example, right? So we go three to five, so it can't just be like three plus five. Uh, we actually have to take every single course. So to take every single course, the longest path would be three to four to five. So all we have to do is really find the max path. Um, there's a couple caveats here. Um, also, they give us a time array where it's one indexed. So if we look at here, uh, node zero, or uh, sorry, node one takes three, uh, node two takes two, uh, node three takes five. So we have kind of everything we need and uh, some caveats that we have, and this is kind of what makes it a hard problem because otherwise I think it would be a medium problem, is we have to start at the source nodes and there's really no way to find the source nodes. Uh, just, I mean, obviously intuitively you can look at it. So actually really the source nodes are the ones with in degree of zero, right? So we can actually figure that out pretty quickly. Um, and the end node or all the end nodes, because we ha might have multiple end nodes are the ones with uh, out degree of zero. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is we want to build our map structure because uh, we're given some relations of source destinations. It's a 2D array. Uh, looks like this. So one is a prerequisite to three. Two is a prerequisite to three. So we're going to have to build this graph structure instead because this is not very friendly for O1 lookups. So let's go map an integer to a uh, list of integers. So kind of like, uh, oh yeah, just like an adjacency list or whatever. Uh, hash map. And... Also, we're gonna build this out. So we're gonna go uh, for each relation in relations, right? Uh, make this extra clear so we can go source is equal to the first value. Uh, we can copy that down. Uh, destination is equal to the second value. And then all we have to do is just like get the current uh, children for this uh, source node. Uh, so get our default. Otherwise, do an array list. Uh, the reason being is this source might not exist in here yet. So we do a getter default just to be clear and then we'll add destination to it. And then we also have to put that back into source. Because, uh, yeah, it might not have existed yet, right? So we can't just do this. Um, okay, yeah, so this is pretty good. Uh, the next thing we want to keep track of is, like I said over here, we need to find the source nodes. Um, and to start off at the source nodes, we need to keep track of the ones without degree of zero. We can do that a number of ways. I'm gonna do this the laziest way possible, maybe even the dumbest way possible. We're gonna have a set of integers and it, it, I'm gonna call it sources. And this will be a hash set that like has all of our source nodes. So at the beginning, uh, we have N. So nodes are labeled one to N, right? Uh, so I'll just go one to N, like I said, and we'll just add in the I. So at the beginning, we're gonna assume all nodes are source nodes. And then if we ever see destinations, in sources, so if sources dot contains destinations, it's no longer a source node because that means it has some in degree greater than one or greater than or equal to one. So we can do sources dot remove destination just to take good care of that. So now we have everything we need. We have an adjacency list. We have our time. We have our source nodes. So yeah, it's really that simple. Uh, so we're gonna have like some helper function called like a max path. And it's gonna take a number of things here, so I'll make this very clear. The first thing we need is we're gonna need to pass in our graph so it knows what to traverse. Uh, we're also gonna need some current node. Uh, we also want the time, because uh, we need to know the time taken at each individual node. Uh, we want some current node here. Uh, and for now, I'll just return zero. So what we actually, what do we need here? Well, we need to find the max path. So basically result is gonna be zero because there's no such thing as like a negative time. And all we're gonna do is go through the sources. Uh, so for integer source, 
in sources. So these are all the source nodes here. Uh, we're going to just start DFSing. So res will equal to math.max, whatever is at res, and the max path, uh, passing in the graph, passing in the time, and also starting at this source. Uh, the reason why we do this is because, like I said, we need to find the max path. Because look at this example again. Uh, the minimum amount of time we can take, we can't just take six months go when, going one to five. We have to do all courses. So the max will be the three to four to five. So this is actually going to be the minimum time required, and that's three plus four, which is seven plus five is 12, and you'll see that's the output right here. So we actually need to find the max path, even though it says minimum time, that is the minimum time required. Okay, so moving on to here, actually, uh, we have a couple of things here. Uh, so we need to go through all the children and find the max path recursively. So we'll have some result here, and then we'll return the result. And basically down here, we need to go through all the children. So for int child, and actually uh, up here in this loop, I did something for int. Let me go in the source here instead. Okay, so for each child in graph.getCur, because if we do a graph.getCur, that's its children list, right? So res will be equal to math.max, whatever's at res, and basically the max path going to this next node. So uh, this would just be child, uh, or sorry, uh, res max path, uh, passing in graph time again, and then child is the curve. And then we don't actually want to return res, because if you notice, we never took account to time. So we actually do time, I keep doing that, uh, cur minus one plus res. Uh, cur minus one, because this time array is one index, so the time taken to complete this course will be cur minus one. Uh, another weird thing is, and this is the tricky part, uh, the end destination uh, will get a key error right here because it doesn't exist in the hash map because it has no uh, out degree. So we're going to actually do an early break here. So if not graph.contains key cur, which kind of like means that it's a end node, uh, we're just going to simply return right away time cur minus one. Because uh, we still have to take time to complete this end node, but we don't want to try to like go through its children or anything. Okay, so this actually looks pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and run this right away. Um, and I'll explain why it's not... Uh, oh, I did something uh, really silly. So this is actually a list, integer list. I didn't uh, type it. Okay, let's run this. And it looks like it's pretty good. Let's use all example test cases to make sure it's good. And I'll actually explain why this is going to TLE. Uh, so it might TLE because there might be a lot of convoluted connections in this graph. So think if every node is connected to every other node without a cycle. Uh, that's a lot of repeated work. And it'll actually TLE if I submit this right now. So we do have to memoize this max path here. So what we're really going to do here is uh, we do have to memoize this and I'm going to actually set up our memo map here and all we have to do is just track a map of some integer to some integer and I'll call it memo new hash map and I'm going to pass this into our function right here uh, and actually this is probably more appropriate to put globally uh, just because it's kind of like the standard here so I'll call this out private up here and this is going to be our memoization and the reason being is if we ever run across a cur node we know it's max path because we've already computed this uh there's no way it's going to change it's still going to take that amount of time from that node to the destination node so we've already computed it so another thing we can do here is uh so let's go here so we're just going to return this uh so basically what we can do here at this point, so if memo.contains key cur, we've already computed this. So we can just return memo.get cur. And then another thing we have to do is uh, let's actually call this uh, memo.put and let's go cur and take this and put it into our memo. And then we're just gonna return memo.get cur. So that's really all we change. We just have to memoize it because it'll TLE. Let's make sure it works on these test cases again, just in case. And it looks like it's pretty good. Let's go ahead and submit this. 
and you'll see I in, the reason why I knew this is because in the oh that looks pretty bad but I'll talk about time complexity and why it's not actually that bad but in the contest I got time limit exceeded so I actually knew to do that so yeah it's kind of like a hefty solution and you can simplify this probably because I'm using Java if you're using Python it'll be a lot smaller of a solution so let's talk about time and space so time is just simply actually going to be uh, O of N now let me explain why it condenses down to O of N so we're actually like DFSing through this but we're really just going across every single node because we might have pre-computed a node. So if we run across a node again, we've already computed it and because we memoize it, it's actually ON. So really all we're doing is computing the path for every single node only once. So it's actually on the order of ON and you could actually call this like the, the worst case is actually like the longest path between nodes, but I'm gonna call it ON. Uh, if somebody else has an objection, uh, please comment. Uh, space is actually on as well. The reason being is we build an adjacency list, which is all the nodes. We also have the sources thing. Uh, other than that, yeah, it's actually pretty fun. And yeah, thank you for watching. I appreciate it.